Coming up on American Medicine Today, liberal elites are demanding a new world order further separating the haves from the have-nots. We speak to climate expert Mark Morano about the Great Reset and what we can do to push back. Next, Tommy tells us how a construction-related fall led to pain in his neck. Unable to continue his daily routines, Tommy found the Bonatti Spine Institute and is now happily living pain-free. Finally, Dr. Bonatti highlights the many advancements he's made in treating the spine. Learn how decades of research and practice have given him an unrivaled insight into healthcare. Coming up on American Medicine Today. Featuring cutting edge science and medical innovation, touching personal stories of recovery from pain, along with political, social, and healthcare issues plaguing our nation. This is American Medicine Today, brought to you by the Bonatti Spine Institute and Alfred Bonatti, MD. Welcome to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Bonatti alongside my friends Ethan Euchre and world-renowned orthopedic surgeon Dr. Alfred Bonatti. So our next guest is sounding the alarm on liberal elites desire for the new world order of no privacy, property, or liberty. Joining us to discuss is returning guest Mark Morano, climate expert and best-selling author of the explosive new book, The Great Reset global elites and the permanent lockdown. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Why don't you tell us about this great reset and why it is that we're actually heading towards it? This has been in the works in America for about a hundred years, in 1930, <laughs> a little over a hundred years. Mm -hmm. It actually began with Joe Wilson's administration, the idea of that average people aren't able to really manage their lives, that they need mm -hmm. credential experts as part of an administrative class, mm -hmm. administrative bureaucracy to rule their lives. So fast forward, there's been a lot of forces of the 20th century that brought us here, including 9-11, which gave us mm -hmm. emergency declaration then gave us the Patriot Act, a surveillance state. But the COVID declaration of March 2020, the emergency declaration and the mm -hmm. two weeks or the 15 days to slow the spread, two weeks to flatten the curve, really accelerated this whole process to the point where the World Economic Forum in, in June of 2020 announced that it was a very rare, narrow window, narrow window of opportunity to impose a great reset upon the world, a great reset of capitalism. And the idea was they were exploiting the opportunity that crisis brings, real or perceived crisis, of the COVID lockdowns, the new normal, and people were psychologically mm -hmm. prepared and they wanted to manage a slow reopening that would essentially rebuild the infrastructure of human existence as we had known it. And the idea was you would own nothing, you'd be happy, you'd have no privacy, and you would life would never be better. Meat eating would be rare. Mm -hmm. uh, there would, and and you know, we've seen where this projection has gone, but it comes, the United Nations is involved, World Health Organization, um, all of these groups, are mm -hmm. promoting the idea that we, the unwashed masses, can't live our lives the way we'd like. We have to be controlled and guided by the expert hands of the unelected bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. And all they've managed to do is create a world of laziness where they're <laughs> relying upon the government for their food, for their money. Handouts. Yes. In fact, that is part of one of the, one of the goals. In fact, if you remember, COVID relief paid more than yes. actual jobs. So mm -hmm. whether you want an airplane, restaurants, flights canceled, restaurants are able to open because people were making more money doing nothing. Yes. This was a radical concept. And I detail this in the book, The Great Reset. In 1972, George McGovern ran on the guaranteed annual income by government. This was too radical for his fellow Democrat, Hubert Humphrey. George McGovern lost in a landslide. Well, fast forward, we've been softened up enough mm -hmm. as a public to COVID comes along and they start giving out. This was, We were actually now in the throes of a, of a universal basic income. And mm -hmm. the idea behind this is the more people politicians can pay, the more guaranteed they are to be permanently reelected. Who's going to vote against the guy? Mm -hmm signing your paycheck every month. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, mm -hmm. and a lot of people, I mean, our show continued throughout all of COVID. Of course, we had yes. to do it remotely and all of that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I almost felt guilty getting that that check because I'm like, I don't even really need it. But the endless piggy, piggy bank supply mm -hmm. of taxpayer money that uh, they, they want people to be relying on. Yeah, and that happened to all the major cities. You have like the Los Angeles mayor, Garcetti, like we balance the budget. We're like, like they're fiscal responsible. 
they balance the budget because they got pumped with un unprecedented amounts of money yes. from the federal government under an emergency decree. And what did they do? They start to now they're just they're building monuments to themselves. They're <laughs> ensuring their reelection. They're handing it out to their special interests. This is how government works. This mm -hmm. is why Jane Fonda said COVID was God's gift to the left, because everything the progressives loved happened on steroids and continues to happen. We're still mm -hmm. living under a COVID public health emergency. Biden keeps extending it. Mm -hmm. And he's now talking about a climate emergency to add to that. And by the way, the World Health Organization has declared climate change the global number one threat. And they did that the year before COVID came out. So <laughs> climate change is going to be added to death certificates. Climate change has already been oh, a doctor in Canada has diagnosed the first medically clinically diagnosed case of climate change in a patient Get out. Uh, <laughs> in the book. And oh, I put it with, with, with climate change because she was suffering from heat stroke and it's now going to be a cause of death. <laughs> All the medical journals are morphing COVID and climate. In other words, unchecked uh, climate will lead to more COVID. So if you don't support the Green New Deal, you're a grandma killer. So I just <laughs> want to know, all these people that support all this climate change propaganda are all buying homes on the, on the water. water. <laughs> so clearly they're not worried. Mm -hmm. They're buying these mega mansions on the water. Why yes, are people yeah. listening to them when they don't even listen to themselves? Well, it really it does expose the whole agenda when Obama has an oceanfront yes. home on Martha's Vineyard, by the way, mm -hmm. with many, uh, many gallons of fossil fuel backup oil on his property. I mean, right. there. And, and then of course, John Kerry lives in private jets and everyone, the U.N. climate spokesman, Leonardo DiCaprio. But I, I like it in the Great Reset. It's this is the Great Reset. It's like the old Soviet system. Right. You had your Politburo and elites at the top and the favored you know, people in media and academia, they would get all of the riches of society, mm. the masses would get nothing. So it was right. like a feudal circle. And that's what they're creating now. The slogan, you will own nothing and you'll be happy. It doesn't mean there won't be private ownership. It mm. means that the, the elites will own it. And we're seeing it. Bill Gates yes. gobbling up American farmland, number one farmland mm. owner, according to NBC News, mm -hmm. and China competing with them. And then you have the UN had a declaration in Vancouver where they said private property ownership is bad because it concentrates wealth and creates mm -hmm. inequity. So they're going after the whole concept of ownership everywhere, United Nations, World Economic Forum, and all their policies. So it sounds to me like they need the Fickle Finger of Fate Award. It's insane. So um, the left's frantic about the climate alarmism and it's pushing us toward this darn great reset. And then you have all of Hollywood and these political elites, as they're called, um, just praising themselves and talking down to everybody else. Mm -hmm. So really what they're wanting to do is just redistribute the wealth and have the have and the have nots. They are. And they're doing it. Here's what they're doing. Just immediate to make it concrete. They're destroying our energy system under mm -hmm. the guise of the Great Reset. So we're going to have blackouts, shortages, high cars. They're destroying our freedom of movement, banning gas powered cars, not just Governor Newsom in 12 states, but the Biden administration, Europe. And more importantly, the World Bank is going to stop financing cars. Banks are going to stop financing loans for gas powered cars. Right. They're going to create car shortages a la Cuba and East Germany. We had to wait in line for a Trabant. Cuba's mm -hmm. driving old cars. And the third thing they're doing concretely, they're destroying modern American agriculture, global high yield agriculture, mm -hmm. intentionally creating food shortages. Chaos is good for their agenda because then the elites can assert more control and government power. And what can we, the people, do to fight back, if anything, or just get swallowed <laughs> by the, the socialism wave? We need to gouge our eyes out and give up. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Well done. Uh, the whole, my whole last chapter is about the great reject. And I actually mentioned the Berlin Wall. Berlin That's Wall great. didn't come down because the East German government said, oh, 40 years of Soviet oppression. It came down because the people no longer gave their consent to tyranny. Mm -hmm. So resistance, and I detail, profile the resistance at the school board level against the COVID theater and, mm -hmm. the, and the trans ideology and critical race. Those parents led the rebellion, which led to toppling of these authoritarian governors in places like Virginia. I love it. The great reject. Well, thank you for being on the program. Mark Morano, climate expert and bestselling author of the explosive new book, The Great Reset, Global Elites and the Permanent Lockdown. Let's not go there. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Make sure you stay tuned. Coming up after the break, a story of recovery. 
Don't be screwed by lesser spine institutes who bait you with minimally invasive procedures. Then switch to Screws Rod's disc replacements and hardware. At Bonatti, no metal hardware fusions are ever used. Bonatti invented the precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti spine procedures, they consistently reflect 98.75% patient satisfaction. Over half our patients have suffered from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. Tommy Couch is a native Floridian and a lover of the farm life. Lived in Florida all my life. I was born and raised here, and I uh, worked many different jobs until I started working for uh, Owens, Illinois. as a glass factory out there on the I-4. Then I uh, moved out here to mines for my later years. I got family, my wife, two daughters, a grandbaby, two grandbabies now. I just had one just born three, four months ago, and I'm a proud grandpa again, you might say. So it's pretty much about my life. I'm just a farmer type, country kind of boy. I just lived out in the country all my life, so I'm pretty healthy, I guess. I all I got now is basically a couple of chickens out here, and a cat, and a dog, and, and a couple of donkeys. So um, that's about what we got right now. When working on the roof of a building over 10 years ago, he fell victim to the Florida heat. I was working on a building taking a roof off of it. And uh, I got up there on the building, taking this metal off the, shing uh, the sheets of tin. And it was hot, real hot day. You know, summertime is hot here. And uh, I just stood up and I passed out. And when I passed out, I fell through the rafters and I must have hit the rafters and flipped because I landed upside down in a bathtub. And uh, before, before all this happened, I had kind of like some back pain. And I don't know if that's what you call chiropractic work, but uh, my back pain was gone after that incident of landing in that bathtub. Had a big old knot on the side of my head. And I think that's might have started my neck pain at that point. That's where I think it began. My neck was never right since then. As his pain progressed, he began losing motion in his neck. In the beginning, it was just a little stinging. You know, you turn a little bit and it'd be like a kink in the neck. My neck would pop, actually pop every time I try to straighten it out or curve it. Then it got to the point where I couldn't hardly turn it. I'd have to turn my body to, like when you're driving to look right or left, you kind of had to like turn one way. It started getting worse and worse. And even out when I'm working, you couldn't hardly work without it, without driving you up a wall. And then sleep, I couldn't hardly lay down and sleep, couldn't find anything to comfort it. And uh, if you did, you're lucky. But uh, I tried to take pain pills and stuff to relieve the pain, but it just didn't seem to work, be working. Before finding Bonatti, Tommy met with physicians from other facilities. You know, when you walk into a, like Lakeland General, you know, or go into Tampa's hospitals or any other hospital, they all look alike to me. You know, you walk in and you don't know who the doctors are. And I really don't know any doctors that I feel like I could have trusted. And the one I did thought I could trust that one day, he's the one that said he's gonna cut through the front and work around to the back. And I'm thinking, well, the pain's in the back more. Why are we going through the front? Well, that's the only way they can do it. And I'm thinking, uh, this don't make sense. So I went to this other guy and he said, man, I wouldn't touch that neck. He says, the odds of you coming out of there paralyzed are good. I, like I said, I just kept looking and looking for somebody or somebody to, to straighten it out, you know, to try to correct it if they could. During a consult, Dr. Benatti addressed a secondary pain Tommy assumed was unrelated to his neck. After that revelation, he began his procedures in February 2016. So they started going with the x-rays and stuff and they showed what was on my neck and uh, they saw the pain, you know, where the pain was at. They were pointing out the right things, telling me exactly what was wrong, where the nerves, like I had numbness going down my arm and they were saying this one here was doing that, you know, certain vertebrae. And uh, then Bonatti stepped in and said something about, do you ever get chest pains? And I said, oh yeah, yeah, I used to get two or three times now. I went to the hospital checking it out because I thought I was having a heart attack or something. And when I get there, they say, you're in great shape. There ain't nothing wrong with you. And I'm thinking, okay, so what is it? And they couldn't come up with anything. But he was ex describing it perfectly. I mean, he said, did it kind of shoot down your arm and then kind of like under yourself and then worked the way into the chest? I said, yeah, that's exactly how it worked. I said, it worked right up there and it's just 
real sharp pain, like I was having, having an indigestion or something. When he got done, he said, well, when we get done, that should pretty much take care of it. I said, I hope so. The targeted and patented Benati spine procedures are performed using conscious IV sedation. This allows the patient to communicate directly with the doctor to ensure the main source of the pain is eliminated first. The first surgery, when I had the pain the most, you might say, was uh, when he was doing that, you could feel immediately uh, like, like something just released, you know, it opened up something and it started letting it flow. And I said, man, that feels a lot better. And he said, well, move your arms, you know, because they'd let you move once he stops for a minute and let you move around. And everything was pretty good. And I thought, this is pretty good so far. So the next one, I was kind of wondering, should I be getting them that quick? But it didn't seem to bother me. The way they go at it, I thought it was neat because they just, they make a small incision and then they insert this thing in there. I guess it opens up and makes it bigger. And he's not really cutting muscles. He's just pushing them away and then he gets down to the bone or the area where he needs to work, and then he does all his work. And like me, I, I'm working around the mechanic stuff and the small tools he's got are real small little things like a little grinder, little tw uh, tongs that he just breaks, you know, takes the bone out and stuff. And I thought, man, this is neat the way to watch it. And I thought, here I am watching my own surgery and I should be jumping or something, but I wasn't, it was pretty good. Everything just went away. The pain was gone. The nerve, the, the clicking of the bone, you know, the, the, like where it was kind of catching, that went away. And uh, I was fascinated by the way they did it, you know, by just watching them do it, you know, and it was, it was neat. I thought it was neat. And like I said, the whole place is just pleasant to work at. I mean, everybody's pleasant. Everybody's there trying to oh make sure God. you're comfortable and happy and, 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 and have no problems. And, it was fantastic. I enjoyed the place. Tommy now has full range of motion and is back to getting a peaceful night's sleep. Well, I'm sleeping better and I can uh, turn and look better. You know, I can really turn my neck either direction or up and down. You know, it's not a problem now. Before it was like, man, I tried to turn like this way and you could feel the pain any direction, you know. So it didn't really matter where I turned my neck, it hurt. But uh, now, like I said, it's just, it's easy. It just moves so smooth. The way they talked, the way they explained the procedure and everything, I don't think they had any shadow of a doubt in their own head that I wouldn't be able to walk right out of there with no problem. I mean, they, they uh, talked like this was like an everyday thing, like changing the oil in your car, you know, or something like that. I mean, they just, they said it would, you should feel almost perfectly fine. And if not, we'll take care of the problem. You know, we'll, we'll come back and work on it. But like I said, I went in, I had pain, and when I left, I felt great. I mean, it's just unreal. I would prefer him to anybody, you know, anybody at my work, any place. I mean, it's, the man is a good, he knows what he's doing. His whole crew knows what they're doing. There's this unreal. I mean, some place you go in, you got some not so nice nurses or some of the other doctors might be grumpy or stuff, but that wasn't it. I mean, these people were all trying to help you and work with you and make sure that you had just as much comfort and no problems with the pain. If you did have pain, they were gonna try to find a way to get rid of it for you or help you to get away of it. And um, I really enjoyed it the whole time. I mean, you know, being that it's an operation, you don't really wanna enjoy it. But I, I mean, to me, I was a lot more relaxed than most. And I saw so many people coming in with pain and so many of them walking out with no pain. That's what really got me more about wanting to do it, you know, go through this procedure. And it, it worked out good. I'm happy I did now. Bonatti was the one that helped me completely. Thank you for giving my career back to me. Several people have asked me, what did you do, where did you go, who did you see? And I'm more than happy to tell them that the Bonatti Spine Institute is the place to go. He said, don't tell me, I'm gonna tell you what's wrong with you and tell me if I'm correct. And so he did. The good news this time is it was not open back surgery. They did give me my life back. This car is this big. He was a doctor that didn't want to fillet my back open like a fish. During the whole operation, I was awake. I was talking to the doctor. I saw the operation in the monitor. And he's not really cutting muscles. He's just pushing them away. Immediately after the procedure, I was able to stand straight again. And I had zero pain. Well, he did the surgery on the left side. And a week later, I was back in the gym. Don't wait until you're on that downward slide where you can't even function anymore. Just don't wait. Just get it done. 
when somebody can help you to where you can recover and where you can do the things that you were able to do before, you just become thankful. I can't thank the Bonatti Institute enough for giving me my life back. It just opens up doors that you thought were closed. I love you, Doc. <laughs>
where the problem is located. And more I go in that direction, better results I have. Yes. Okay. If I can improve that, then I can have very good results. Yes. I realize that the problem is on the root of the exit of the nerve or on the birth of the, the nerve. You need to, you need, part of the nerve is in one level and the exit of the nerve is in the next level. Correct. If you don't treat those two levels, you don't have the results that you expect. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I want to do it with a very small amount of damage. Correct. And more of this type of changes that I do, better results I have. Yes. And if I do better results, I want to improve this technique to a level that I can treat any spine surgery, whatever the problem is, mm -hmm. and benefit the patient. Every condition, yes. Every condition, mm -hmm. except tumors. Right. Okay. Or fractures that they create deformity. Yes. Or some type of situations like birth deformities, like mm -hmm. scoliosis and things like that. Correct. But yes, you can remove the pain in the scoliosis. Mm -hmm. I will not correct the curvature. Correct. But in scoliosis, you need to use a, a rod to correct the curvature if you correct. want to correct the curvature. Yes. And if you don't correct the curvature mm -hmm. sooner, then you can affect organs like Correct. lungs or, or kidneys yes. or things like that. We do hardware removal that has gotten mangled and tangled in nerves and has loosened in the bone, but you don't believe in that highly invasive and traumatizing surgery, which typically causes a chain reaction above and below. But I found that fusions are not necessary at all. Yes. I found that the fusions are probably a disaster to be made. Mm -hmm. Not only because long surgeries, long exposure of recovery, mm -hmm. horrible results. Correct. And when you finish about six months or a year of mm -hmm. pain and rehabilitation and all mm -hmm. this, you need to go back now Correct. to and do it in another fusion because the normal fusion is coming apart. Correct. They say 65% of one level fusions fail. And a two to three level fusion has an 85% failure rate. So it's definitely something that if you can avoid at all costs, you should. Thank you for watching American Medicine Today. Check us out next week, Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern on Newsmax. If you have any comments or questions, contact us at the number below. You can tweet at Dr. Benati using hashtag American Medicine Today or hashtag AMT. We would like to hear from you.